Financial Planner, Flow Us on YouTube. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now we can see that the deep state, they are really pushing their agenda. And it looks like maybe today was a slow news day because they published that the FBI raided Paul Manafort's home. But this was back in July, which was July 26th. And they're coming out today telling everyone that this has been happening and it they made it sound like it was breaking news and oh my god and it sounds really terrible and of course this is coming from the special counsel Mueller's probe where they're looking into Trump's campaign now they went into his home at in the pre-dawn hours and they went through all his stuff and if this was a true and real story and they actually found something it would have been broadcasted back then but it seems like they held on to it they didn't want to really report about it and now they're just letting it out making everyone believe that something is actually happening now Paul Manafort he gave all the documents and material to Congress and what the FBI found were those same exact documents those records were seized and it is unclear right now what they're actually looking for and if again if this was truly real news and they actually found something it would have been all over the place but it looks like right now they're trying to make it look a lot worse than it really is and this is all part of their plan in the corporate media to make everyone think that something's really going on now what's very interesting about this entire thing and we know the russian collusion story is is a complete fake phony false story the Russian lawyer, Natalia, she said the U.S. media manipulated the story about her meeting with Donald Trump Jr. and accused investor Bill Browder, convicted in Russia for tax fraud, of running a disinformation campaign in the U.S. And she went on to say, I don't know what exactly Mr. Mueller is going to investigate regarding my meeting with his president's son. I can only say what I know that my meeting was determined by my duties as a lawyer. I was defending a Russian citizen in the United States of America. If it turns out that defending a Russian citizen in the U.S. is a crime, in that case, there is a subject for Mr. Mueller's investigation. She said she believed that the media was colluding with certain interests to help push the narrative of a Russian collusion story in the Trump campaign. You see, it's interesting how the US media machine works she said the New York Times sent me a request with a list of questions on July 8th I was very surprised by these questions they were focused on my meeting with Trump at first I couldn't even remember what exactly the meeting was happened when it happened it was so fleeting and inconsequential that I really didn't care but here's what is very interesting after receiving a detailed response from me the New York Times published only a short part they needed today this article has changed significantly if you open the first story they had on the matter and compare it to the original version they published on the 8th you'll see how dramatic the difference is and she's saying that the corporate media manipulated what she was saying and they did it to create this narrative this entire universe that something was happening and when people started to probe and started to look into it they realized nothing really happened and remember the corporate media has been dealing with propaganda for such a long time they don't know how to investigate they don't know how to look for facts they just know how to put out propaganda and they think that everyone is just going to believe what they say I'll give you an example NBC News was out there and many other news agencies were all picking it up because all these stories come from the same exact place and they said that the US is preparing drone strikes in the Philippines and they were going to hit terrorist targets now the Philippines were out there and saying yeah this story is not true we don't know where this is coming from now the Pentagon has confirmed that the US has absolutely no plans to intervene in the Philippines they had no discussion with Duterte they're not going to be doing this where did this story come from but it seems so real when they were putting it out there 
it's completely fake. Now we see that yesterday, Daniel Jean, the National Security Advisor the Prime Minister, uh, to the Prime Minister of, the, of Canada, he went to North Korea. He was trying to get an individual released and it looks like he was able to do this. North Korea released the individual and set him free. Now, the U.S. is saying, well, we have three Americans being held by North Korea. We would like these individuals released also. Now, remember, the United States, I shouldn't even say the United States, I should say the deep state, they are continually pushing North Korea, and North Korea is having a very difficult time dealing with with the United States because on one hand we have the corporate media we have individuals that are rooted in the Pentagon and in the intelligence agencies and they're pushing their agenda against North Korea and what we're seeing right now is that Tillerson and Trump they're playing like good cop bad cop where Trump is coming out and he's saying you know we're gonna hit North Korea we have nuclear weapons He's making threats. And on the other hand, we have Tillerson who's saying, we're looking for peace. We would like to have a diplomatic relationship. And it is really keeping the corporate media off balance. Now, the corporate media, they are raising the bar and keeping the fear factor alive with North Korea. Now, we need to go back in time a little bit because when they launched their first ICBM, which it really wasn't IC, it wasn't really an ICBM, Russia tracked the missile it was an intermediate range missile and actually broke apart and it the, many of the tests weren't even successful but the corporate media from that point they made everyone believe that there was an icbm launched it could hit alaska then they launch another one and that can hit chicago and they kept pushing this idea that now they can attack the united states and they were trying to keep the fear you know at a high level now they're coming out with a story and they're saying that North Korea is threatening to hit Guam and the United States has a strategic airfield and a naval station on the island of Guam. It's a closer target than the United States because remember the deep state realizes that they really don't have a missile system that can hit the United States. Yes, the corporate media, the intelligence agencies are all out there trying to convince you that they do have one. But to set up a false flag, to set up something that will convince the world that target where they're going to shoot a missile off and try to hit the United States, that would not work. They would know right off the bat that this is completely fake, phony, and false. But to fire a missile from North Korea and have it fly near Guam and have it explode, they can pull this off. And does it mean they're going to pull it off? No. They're building this up. They're trying to convince everyone that this is what's going to happen. And you can see out in the corporate media, they are really playing this up, that North Korea is going to blow up Guam, and they have the ability to do this. Now, why would North Korea just fire their missile at Guam? Because they understand that if they do this, they are completely destroyed in a matter of seconds. There's nothing that they can do to stop what would happen to them. It wouldn't even make sense. Now, they're trying to make you think that this individual, Kim Jong-un, is absolutely crazy. Well, I hate to say it. There's already been reports. He is not crazy. What he's trying to do, he's trying to create a nuclear weapon, have a successful missile launch to stop any type of regime change coming from the empire-building deep state. That's what his whole entire goal is right now. Now, what's the goal of the deep state? Well, the goal of the deep state right now, as we can see, is they're becoming very desperate. When this faction becomes so desperate, they will try anything to push their agenda. And this is exactly what they're saying. This is what we're seeing right now, because what's happening in Syria, they are losing all the borders, they're losing their paid mercenary forces. Syria is a dead end. What they have right now is North Korea. And like I said, Congress is on vacation from now all the way up until Labor Day. They don't come back until after Labor Day. And it's very odd and how you're seeing this entire narrative 
being pushed right now and they're trying to make a case that North Korea is about to do something. Now, Tillerson is out there saying, no, 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 there's nothing going to happen. We're talking diplomatically with North Korea, with South Korea, with China, with Russia, and we're trying to calm the situation down. The corporate media, on the other hand, they are fear-mongering like there's no tomorrow because they're getting their instructions from where? From the deep state. So their goal right now, and they only have a certain period of time to do this, is to start a war. It's to have some type of false flag event, something major. Now, they they might fire a missile from a sub or someplace out at sea to show and make it seem like it came from North Korea and they'll report on it and all the news agencies will pick it up. Maybe it will fly towards Guam. Maybe it will fly near a ship. Maybe it will fly near Japan. Maybe it will hit someplace and they will try to use this to start something or to have Trump or to try to push Trump into doing something that most likely he will regret. And this is exactly what the deep state goal is right now because they have nothing left. Because as we can see, the Syrian army right now alongside the Palestinian Liberation Army, they resume their offensive in Syria on the border of Jordan where they're taking back that border. So they're closing off all the borders in Syria. So no supplies can come in for those paid for those paid mercenaries, the terrorist groups inside of Syria. Syria right now is pretty much a dead end mission for the deep state and they know this. They've lost it. Afghanistan right now not really going anywhere. Trump is looking into what has really been going on in Afghanistan. I think he already knows. I think he knows that we've been spending billions and billions or actually trillions of dollars there and this this money just completely disappeared and all these troops that were sent there were not really to stop anything. It was to keep the status quo and to keep this ongoing forever. And now we have North Korea. And from my take and from what I've been looking at, all the indicators, it shows that right now, what we're seeing is a good cop, bad cop type of scenario while China and Russia try to work something out with North Korea. Moon Jae-in is on in on this. And on the other side, we have the deep state where they're pushing their agenda to start this war. And we can see right now that they're trying to create this narrative now. They're trying to push their agenda. They know they have a certain period of time. And during this month of August, going into the beginning of September, we should really see this accelerate. And we're going to see a lot more stories. We're going to hear a lot more information come out. And we might even see a false flag event. So this is what we're looking at right now. And again, we can see that they're going to push it to the extreme. Now, hopefully... You know, we don't go to war over this, but this is their end goal.